Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with Econ Course Companion, and today we're going to take a look at productive and allocative efficiency in the market structure of a monopoly. And we're going to demonstrate on a diagram where a monopoly would operate if, if it were trying to be as productively efficient as possible, and if it were trying to be as allocatively efficient possible. In other words, as productive as they possibly could within the firm, and also, that's productive al efficiency, allocative efficiency has to do what would be best for society as a whole. All right, let's take a look. Well, like every diagram in Monopoly, where do we start? We start with the base diagram. What's the base diagram? Super simple, my friends. It's the same thing you've seen in all the other videos <laughs> related to Monopoly. It is a diagram that has price and cost and a, and a currency on the vertical axis. Zero at the origin, output on the horizontal axis. Then we come back and we draw our demand curve, a descending demand curve, because this is a price maker's market where the, the, the Monopoly can actually pick its price point. And we know that demand always equals average revenue. And then marginal revenue is going to descend at twice the rate and cross the horizontal axis. Right? And this is our marginal revenue curve. Then, if you don't understand the relationship between those two, go back and watch some earlier videos. Then, we're going to draw our marginal cost curve. Boom! There it is. And then we're going to find our profit maximizing level of output, which is Q, and draw that up to price. And we know now that we have drawn our base diagram. Why this base diagram? Because if you try to memorize all of these diagrams in economics in general, but especially in theory of the firm, you're not going to be able to do it. Just admit loss right now. <laughs> so what, what my whole strategy with my students and what my strategy is here on Econ Course Companion is to take all of these diagrams and simplify them down to a base diagram. Like, where do you start? If you want to show profit in a monopoly, you draw this diagram. If you want to show um, revenue maximization in um, a monopoly, you draw this diagram. If you want to show productive and allocative efficiency in a monopoly, you start with this diagram. In other words, this is the base diagram. In other words, this is your best friend in showing all bunch of different things in monopoly. All right, let's take a look. So now what? Well, now we got to think about, okay, what's productive and allocative efficiency? Well, productive efficiency is the level of output that a firm would operate at if, if, it were trying to use all of its resources as productively efficient as possible, okay? That point is not going to be Q. It is not going to be at the level of output that maximizes profits. Why? Because that level right there is not where its average cost is the lowest. Now, let me tell you something, my friends. I told you ways back in another video that the marginal cost curve is where all of your answers lie. This marginal cost curve tells you where things happen because it is the most influential and powerful di um, curve on this diagram, okay? So Q is the profit maximizing level of output. How do we know that? Oh, that's because that's where MC equals MR. Cool. But productive efficiency has to do with where the firm is operating at its lowest possible average costs. Where a firm is operating at its lowest possible costs, and that is going to be where it crosses the marginal cost curve because the average cost curve must have its lowest point at the marginal cost curve. So its productively efficient level of output is going to be where it produces its last piece of output, its last marginal piece of output for its lowest possible cost. Well, that's at the lowest point of its average cost curve. So the productively efficient point in a monopoly is where MC equals AC, where MC equals AC, or average total cost, or ATC, because ATC and AC are the same thing, okay? So where MC equals AC, that is your productively efficient point. Boom, Q1. Okay, now what about society as a whole? Well, that has to do with allocative efficiency. And this is, the, the point here is, this would be the level of output, level of output, level of output, profit maximizing level of output, where the firm would operate if it cared most about consumers, like the society as a whole, or if you took this into market failure talk, it would be like the socially optimal point. Why is that? 
Well, where the marginal cost operates, or where marginal cost crosses its average revenue curve, which is also the demand curve, this is the point where more consumers would be able to purchase this product. Why is that? Here's why. Because at Q2, where MC equals AR, MC equals AR is the allocatively efficient point. At this point, the firm's average revenue and the marginal cost for producing this uh, last unit of output equal one another. Okay? So at this point right here, and here's where I think this will all come clear to you. At this point right here, you have a price level that's there. Okay? That's the lowest price point. If you think about productive efficiency, okay, productive efficiency, and if we were to show where the price of if the firm worked at productive efficiency, the price would be there, which is higher. And if the firm were worried about its profit maximizing level of output, which is Q, you see the price is there. So for allocative efficiency, we're talking about a, ma a maximized, like a level of output that maximizes consumers' ability to purchase it. Well, if the price is here, then that means that all of these people will be able to purchase it. Remember, because a demand curve is simply a representation of people's willingness and ability to buy it at a certain price level. So where MC equals average revenue, which is also demand curve, you are going to find this product available on the market for the lowest possible price. Did you hear that? Where MC equals AR, where their marginal costs equal their average revenue per unit of output, is where the price will be the lowest, which will be allocatively efficient for the society as a whole. Is that the profit maximizing level of output for a firm? No, that's up here. Is it the productively efficient point for a firm? No, that's up here. So when firms think about profit maximization, the price level will actually be higher than if they thought about their own productive efficiency, or of course, if they thought about the allocative efficiency for society as a whole. Those are three really key points here. Now, one little trick that I want to show, first of all, that needs to make sense. If that didn't make sense, rewind this video a little bit and learn that again, just this one slide, okay? But here's the thing. You, the way this, the way Jocelyn Blink has drawn this diagram lines up Q, Q1, and Q2 in a very nice order for us. It's a very well-drawn diagram. Now, it doesn't matter where you draw the AC curve. You could draw the AC curve up here, right, or even show a loss. And wherever the marginal cost curve crosses the AC, which in this curve is right here, is going to be the productively efficient level of output. Did that make sense? So if this curve were to move, like if I were to draw the average cost curve to show a loss up there, then what would happen is this level of output there would be where the firm should operate if it's trying to um, produce at a, productive, at a productive level, the productively efficient level of output. Because productive efficiency always happens where marginal cost equals average cost. Okay, I just want to say that because what you want to do when you draw this is just draw it in the most convenient place possible. And the most convenient place possible is where Jocelyn Blink drew it, which is to show where profit maximi maximizing and uh, productive efficiency and allocative efficiency line up the best. I hope that makes sense. If not, don't worry about it. Just when you, when you want to have to draw productive and allocative efficiency for Monopoly, draw the diagram exactly the way Jocelyn Blink did, which is... To, to have all of the um, curves line up like this, all right? Cool, my friends. I hope that's helpful, right? Showing productive and allocative efficiency in a monopoly is really important. You're gonna have to do that. You had to do that in perfect competition. You just learned about a monopoly. You're gonna have to do the same thing in monopolistic competition, and you're gonna have to do the same thing in oligopoly. Because one of the things that you're asked by the IB to compare is the market structures and how they are productively and allocative efficient, allocatively efficient, especially allocatively efficient, because that's what would be best for society as a whole. All right, my friends, if you didn't understand that, go back and learn that again. This is all really accessible information. Theory of the firm can be intimidating because of the name of it and all this stuff. Listen, it's HL only, but you got this, and all of the IB students who've come before you have understood this, and there's no reason why you can't also. 
okay? It might take you another read. It might, remember, all things in econ have to go through your mind three times. That's my rule. That's what I say to my students here. That's why econ course companion is here. It is here so that you can go back to this information whenever you need it, right? Until it all of a sudden just clicks in your mind. And the coolest thing about econ is at some point, man, it just goes bloop and you got it super clear. Good deal, my friends. Be nice to one, be, be nice to one another out there. Be kind to yourself as well. And we'll talk to you in a bit.